Hi everyone, uh, Stepan here. I'm back from my league game. I have to say this is probably the one of the most interesting games I've ever played and probably the most instructive one because uh, it was hard at one point and it got very complicated. So as usual, I didn't play the opponent I was preparing for. Uh, for some reason, the guy who plays board two for their team usually didn't play today. So I played another opponent, uh, 200 points higher rated than me, almost 200. So obviously I had no preparation against him, so I went into the game unburdened uh, and I played e4. He played d6, the Pierce defense. Uh, d4, knight to f6, knight to c3, g6, normal moves. And like I said in, in my opening videos about the Pierce, I really like the Kolmov system. I haven't played it thus far in a tournament game. I decided to try it out now. So I played bishop c4, the Kolmov system. I'm going to link uh, the video on the theory of the Kolmov in the description below. It's a very interesting opening. Now the main line uh, is very tricky and I was hoping we are going to enter that. The main line is uh, bishop g7, queen to e2, knight to c6. And now this leads to a queen sacrifice with e5, knight takes d4. Uh, e takes f6, knight takes queen, pawn takes bishop, rook g8, knight takes knight. And this is three pieces for the queen. The engines seem confused about this variation, but it's actually better for white. But after bishop c4, he played an unusual move. He played c6. Uh, let me just say that after bishop c4, knight takes doesn't work. Not because you take with the knight, because then this variation is sort of equal. Uh, but after bishop c4, knight takes c4, white can play bishop takes h7, and after king takes, then take the knight. Here, white is much better. After bishop c4, uh, he played c6. I played queen to e2 anyway, supporting my e4 pawn. And here he played e5, which I thought was a mistake. I think after queen to e2, bishop g7 is a much better move. Uh, he could probably go for this. Uh, but I'm not sure there's anything there for black. I think white is better here. As always, I'm going to run an engine analysis at the end of the video so I can see where I went wrong. But after queen to e2, e5, now white is simply better. Uh, because after d5, d5, knight f3, uh, I'm putting pressure on the e5 pawn and it's really hard to defend. I'm not even sure what black does. Queen e7 is probably the best move or queen d6. That's really awkward, uh, nonetheless, because then uh, after queen d6 or queen e7, I can play knight to g5, and after, let's say, queen e7, knight g5, he would have to play this, and I mean, I'm not even sure what to take with, I guess I should take with the knight, with the bishop, to leave my strong knight here, but in any case, queen anywhere uh, seems to be losing, so he went for the only logical move, which seems losing anyway, bishop d6. After bishop d6, I want to deny him casting rights, so bishop h6. The problem is that after bishop h6, he has knight g4, and then bishop g5 check, f6, bishop to d2, but then still my light squared bishop is denying casting rights, so I went for that. So bishop h6, uh, he did play knight to g4, I think he has to play it, uh, otherwise... I'm not sure, I just castle long and this bishop is horrible. So knight g4, bishop g5, everything is pretty forced here, uh, f6, and bishop d2. And now I was happy because, firstly, he can never castle. His king is going to be stuck in the center for the rest of the game. I'm fully developed, I only have to castle to finish my development. Uh, his knight is about to get trapped, he has to react now, because if he plays something stupid, then uh, h3 simply wins the knight. The knight has nowhere to go, the bishop is covering h6. Uh, so after bishop to d2, he had to react. I thought his best move was simply to retreat the bishop to f8. Because that gets rid of the pin uh, on the bishop, and he can play queen c7 after a castle long, and his knight can retreat to h6 and then back to f7. And my idea was that he should play knight h6, knight f7, bishop g7, and try to castle. So... Probably this was the best plan. But after bishop d d2, he played h5, and now his position is just losing, because after h3, knight h6, knight h4, I'm attacking the g6 pawn, and there's no way to defend. Uh, the bishop is covering g8, the pawn is just lost. If you try to push with g5, then queen takes h5, and this is game over. So there's no way to defend the pawn. Uh, he went knight f7, I took, 
Uh, once again, this move doesn't work, I think, because I can just take on h5. So he played rook to uh, h7. And now I decided to just castle. I shouldn't really complicate matters. And here I thought, I mean, I, I know I'm completely winning. This is just a pawn up and not that there's no compensation. Black's position is very hard to play. His light squared bishop has no squares. His knight is a bad piece. His rook on a1, on a8 I won't even mention. The rook on h7 is awkward. The queen has no scope. My bishops are perfect. My rook is great on d1 and... Just an opening gone badly wrong. I think he didn't know the Kolmov system. Here he played knight to d7. And they had a big thing. Uh, probably about 10 minutes. This is the first time I, I calculated something. So I was looking at bishop d3 attacking the bishop. But I couldn't see what happens after bishop d3, queen c7. I'm not sure how good this is. And so I decided to open things up uh, and leave this tempo gainer for later because the bishop is attacked with tempo after after my bishop moves so i was hoping he's going to put something on the dark squares so i played f4 this seemed like a very good idea because the king is obviously in the center there are no squares for the king to go to for now so if i manage to open up some some lines the king is going to get checkmated he played b5 which i expected I played bishop e6, I don't want to retreat. I thought about sacrificing briefly, but I'm not sure I have anything. Uh, this attacks the bishop, but I, I'm not sure there's there's, there's much here. Uh, I don't know, probably here. I'm not threatening anything, and I gave up a piece, and after a move such as a6, there isn't much going on. So bishop e6. Uh, he played knight to f8, which I thought was a good move, challenging both of my pieces. And now I was looking at bishop f5 briefly. Uh, but yeah, I wasn't really sure about this. I reckoned uh, he was going to take on, on, on f5. So bishop f5, pawn f5 opens up the e file, which is good. So I thought he can't take on f5, but he should take on g6. Bishop takes g6. Uh, rook to g7. Queen takes here, and this seemed good. But then I saw that he can just ignore this. And after bishop f5, he doesn't really have to do anything. So, yeah, <clears throat> I thought queen c7 was good once again. So anyway, after knight to f8, I decided to trade everything off. So king takes, uh, bishop takes, queen takes. And I thought uh, my position was great here. Uh, the only problem I have is b4. Because after b4, my knight has to go to b1. If I go to a4, then queen to a6 wins my knight. So I had to free up a square for my knight on e2. And I thought the logical move was either queen f3 or queen f2. Uh, looking at the king. So I played queen to f2. Uh, queen f3 was perhaps better because I keep an eye on the h, uh, h5 pawn. But I didn't think much of that. I wanted to stop bishop here in some positions. Here he played h4, and now I played bishop e3. And now I have a strong threat. Uh, my threat is now uh, rook takes d6. Let's say he plays a nothing move. Uh, my calculation was, let's say, he does nothing. Rook takes, knight, ta knight takes, bishop c5, and his position is losing. Because, let's say he defends here, uh, I take here, and he loses the knight. So this is just game over. So in this position, uh, rook takes d6 was a strong threat, so he can't really do much. He has to defend the bishop one more time. And he played queen to e6, which I think is the only move in the position. And now I had a very long thing. Here I spent about 30 minutes, maybe even more, because I thought this was the critical position. And I got kind of sad that I didn't convert my winning uh, position before. I thought I, I should have won already because I had such a strong attack and his king was awkward. And now I realized that rook takes d6 doesn't really work. I tried to make it work. So my calculation was rook takes d6. He obviously he has to take with the knight. If he takes with the queen, then bishop c5 wins the queen. So knight takes. And now I was looking at all sorts of moves. Uh, I think bishop c5 doesn't work here because he can simply defend. And if I take here, uh, I, he has to take with the queen. And now I was looking at variations like this, but I don't really have much. He can always play rook to f7. So the second variation I was calculating, if not uh, bishop to c5, after rook takes d6, knight takes d6, I was looking at f takes e. 
he obviously has to take with the queen. And now I was looking at bishop to f4. After bishop f4, he has to keep defending the knight. So let's say here. Rook to d1, but he can still defend everything. And I couldn't see... If I, I just couldn't see a continuation here. I think uh, the exchange sacrifice wasn't justified after queen to e6. So I changed my strategy, thought about a lot of moves. I thought about c4 here. It's kind of risky giving the knight the... Uh, I'm sorry, I thought about um, f5. It's kind of risky giving the knight the, the g5 square, but still I think... Uh, f5 was playable but i decided to play bishop c5 and uh, his threat is obviously uh, b4 and after my knight moves queen takes a2 so that's very scary so now i still after bishop c5 have time if he plays this i can still take here okay so this wouldn't really work i would dislodge the queen so after bishop c5 uh, he played king to g8 simply unpinning and I thought my advantage was sort of slipping, but not too much. So after king g8, I played uh, f5, chasing the, the queen away. I thought his best try was bishop takes, queen takes, and moving the queen then. I thought this was much better. But in the game, uh, he played queen here, and now it's... Uh, I'm going two pawns up. I calculated everything before bishop c5, because it took more than half an hour. Now the variation is very simple. Bishop takes bishop, knight takes bishop queen to c5, and done, takes, 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 queen c5. The only seemingly trick he has, because my queen is hanging, is knight takes f5, but it doesn't work because of queen c6. If knight f5, I can't exchange the queens, obviously, because I lose a pawn, but I can take on c6, now the rook is attacked, and the knight is attacked, so knight takes f5 doesn't work. So after queen to c5, he has to defend the knight. The only way to defend is rook to d8, otherwise he loses a piece. Uh, if he moves the knight, then I take on c6. If he plays rook d8, I take on c6, which is what happened. Rook d8, queen takes c6. And this is now just two pawns up. Uh, he decided to trade the queens. I accepted. Takes, takes. And here I started to realize that the position isn't as simple. And now the real game is starting. I'm two pawns up. But I think this game is extremely instructive because this is probably the hardest... Uh, two pawns up positions position I've ever had and I thought for such a long time that I got to around eight minutes on the clock uh, when the game ended this was extremely complicated so the game continued rook h to e1 I wanted to defend my pawn if I lose this pawn it's going to be tricky he played king f7 and now uh, I don't want to allow knight c4 if he gets his knight into c4 then it's going to be very hard that's why I don't think I should play b4. If I play b4, stopping b4, then knight c4 seems like a very good move. So I decided to play b3, just to stop uh, knight c4 forever. And of course, he played b4, and I played knight a4. Now my reasoning is, if I manage to get knight c5, knight e6 in, that's game over. He played rook c8, and now it's, it's not easy. The position is not easy. He has knight b5 knight here, he has knight b5, knight here, he has knight b5, knight d4, this knight is much better than my knight, and now he's threatening to double up here. So I found a variation which I liked. I once again spent a huge amount of time, rook d5, and I was expecting uh, king to e7 defending the knight, because now he can transfer his other rook uh, into the game. Rook e to d1, uh, the pawn can't be taken because the rook is hanging, but rook c6, defending uh, the knight now. And now, uh, the variation I calculated, uh, of course, if I play knight, c, uh, knight c5, then nah, it's not so clear. Knight c5 is, I think, losing because of rook c7. And now if I, if I move my knight, uh, c2 is hanging. Uh, if he takes my knight, I can take his knight, but then c2 is hanging, and then g2 is hanging, and a2 is hanging, so I can still lose this position. So after rook to c6, I, uh, as I said, I calculated a lot in advance, and I saw the move rook c5. And I thought this was a great move. Uh, rook c5, if he declines the trade, then rook a6 is the only move, and this is now a very passive rook. So I would have time to simply defend with rook to e1, and he can't really get his rook back into the game. So now I'm, I'm playing a rook up, and this would be easily uh, winning. 
Uh, after rook c5, if he exchanges, I'm not losing the pawn after rook c7 because I have rook d5. And now everything is perfectly defended, he has no entry points and once again an easy position. And then I saw that after rook c5 he can play rook c7, which I thought was the best move. And I have to exchange, takes, takes. Now once again a tricky position, I have to defend my e4 pawn, so rook e1. And now knight b5, and it's not that simple. He's going to play knight d4. Uh, and after he plays knight d4, I need to be ready to defend. That means that I have to play rook e2 in advance. Okay, uh, rook e2 has to be played. If I move my knight, he always has knight to c3, harassing my uh, a pawn. So if I play knight to b2, trying to cover uh, with knight to c4 when he plays knight d4, then he can simply play this move and my pawn is hanging. That's, that's it. My position is, I think, worse than his. So after knight b5, I need to be careful. So rook to e2, defending in advance. Now if knight d4, I can play rook d2. And everything is defended. He played a6, a waiting move. And now <laughs> I have to find a way to win. Obviously, I want to play c4. If I manage to get in c4, in a position in which Ampasan is defended, which means that I need to have my rook on e3, my king on d2, and then c4, uh, c4 takes, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, king takes, if I manage to get c4 where it's defended three times, then that's the liberating move. Because I cannot play g3, I cannot play a3, I cannot play c3. I'm two pawns up and all of my pawns are dead. This is a very hard position. So king d1. King f7. He wants to get around here, which was the best plan, trying to take my g2 pawn. Now rook e3. I can play this move because uh, if he plays knight d4 now, harassing my pawn, seemingly I cannot defend it twice. I now have c4, and if he takes, it's defended twice. And the knight has no squares. So, I was happy that I got to play rook to e3, because that is that is the first part of my plan. So now I'm, I can play c4 if he moves any of these two pieces. If he moves the knight or the rook, c4 comes in, I have a passed pawn. He continued with king g7. I played king to d2, now threatening to play c4. As I said, now c4 is defended three times. He played king h6, and now I almost played c4, but then I thought I'm going to lose. So my calculation was this. c4, uh, b takes c4, knight takes c4, knight takes c4, rook takes c4, rook takes c4. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, c4, b takes c4, knight takes c4, knight takes c4, rook takes c4, rook takes c4, uh, king takes. And then he would have king here. And which king is faster? My king is on c3. So my king is here. He plays uh, king to g5, king back to d2, king to f4, king to e1. And he can take, he can take here. So yeah, okay. So wait. King to g5, king to d2, king here. I have to play king here. And then he plays king here. I'm going to put it on the board. I had a very hard time calculating during the game, so I didn't play c4, but let's see. I thought I might be losing. c4 takes, 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 king here. These two pawns are very loose here, here. I think, I, yeah, I have to play b4, king here. I have no idea who is faster. Yeah, okay, I'm making it just on time. But uh, after king h6, I, I saw this variation and I got really scared. And I thought that c4 could, could at least... Uh, give him huge counterplay chances and I didn't want to play that so I played the prophylactic move I just played g4 and after g4 I don't think those variations work so after g4 if he takes Ampasan then rook g3 and his king is dead now I simply play c4 but he played king here and now if he gets into f4 it's complicated. So now I can finally play c4. Now the same variation doesn't work for him if he takes, 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 uh, king here. Uh, if he plays here, then I simply go g5 and uh, his game is lost. So after c4, 
he didn't take Kampa Sun, he played Knight D4. And now the true complication starts. Now uh, I have to prevent his king from coming into F4, otherwise uh, my game is lost. And even though I'm two pawns up, he's defending everything, and if he mops up the H3 pawn, then I'm losing. But luckily, I managed to calculate all of this, and I got there just in time. Knight B2, I'm going to play Knight D3 defending F4. Rook D6, uh, it doesn't matter that my knight is now pinned, I'm defending the F4 square. A5. And now uh, the problem is, I can't play king to e1 because of knight c2. And the only way to win this position is to control the f4 square with my rook or with my king. My knight has to be able to move because I need to get my knight into the f3 square. Once I get my knight to f3, I'm winning. So this is what I knew at this point. And here I had about 9 minutes on the clock. So already very near Zeitnot. He had exactly the same amount of time. So now, first I wanted to tickle him with a3. So king c1, rook c6, rook, uh, king b2. The problem is that I can never really play a3, because, let's say, he does nothing, he played rook c8. If I play a3, takes, 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 I'm losing my rook. So as long as his knight is on d4, a3 is not a move. So after rook to c8, I went back. King c1, rook c7, king d2. Rook d7, king d1, and now... I started my plan. I wanted to get my knight, to get my rook to e1, f1, f2. So my rook on f2. After my rook gets on f2, because he is then controlling the c2 check square, I want to play king d2, king e3. And when my rook is on f2, my king on e3, then I want to play knight e1, knight f3 check. So this was my 10 move plan. And I'm happy to say that I managed to get it to work. Rook c7, rook e1. Rook c8, rook f1. Uh, rook c7, rook f2. Rook c8, he can't really do much. King d2. Rook c7, king e3, rook c8, and this is now game over. Knight e1, rook d8. Now not knight f3 check, because then he can infiltrate. Uh, if I take with rook on f3, then he gets into d1. If I take with the king, he gets into d3. So I first played rook to d2, stopping any counterplay. He has to move the rook away. So rook a8. Now I could have played rook to c2, uh, knight to c2 and knight to f3 check. I thought this was slightly more forced. Knight f3, knight takes f3, king takes f3, a4. And this is the move I think he could have played earlier. Let's just go back. This is now easily winning. Uh, here after king d2, I thought that a4 was a good move here because the it's attacked twice. By the knight and by the pawn. But I figured I can take here, takes, takes. Uh, he can't really take. If he takes, then here, here, and my passed pawn should be good enough to win. I just have to defend this, so let's say... Oh, it's actually tricky. So, okay, here. If he plays uh, king here, then I always have this check. No, I don't. Okay, I'm going to have to check this with an engine. So, okay, a4. I think I have to take takes, takes. If he takes here... Rook king here. He can also attack the pawn. Hmm. Wait, a4. So this is the, the only counterplay I really feared. Maybe I can just defend with knight here. It's a passive defense, but it's a defense. And everything seems to be covered. If rook here, then how do I defend? Yeah, this is tricky. I'm going to check this. But after king d2, he played rook c7. And as I said, we got to this position. So my plan of... of <laughs> it was complicated. But rook f1. So, okay. Rook e1, rook f1, rook f2, king d2, king e3, knight e1. And this is now over takes takes he played a4 i simply played c5 ab3 uh, ab3 he played rook a3 uh, i don't really want to defend with rook d3 because he can then play uh, rook to a5 and take my pawn or i have to repeat with rook here i can play here and go for a checkmate but he can play king to h6 so i decided to play rook b2 provoking him to go to a5 and now rook c2 Rook a3, he cannot take the pawn, because I play c6. If he takes, then I simply march my king closer to the b pawn, so here, 
and he, his game is just lost. He cannot defend this. So after rook to c2, rook to a3, I played c6 and he actually went back. c7, rook here. Uh, here he went king h6. Uh, I went here, 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 here. And in this position he resigned. Uh, so uh, I'm extremely happy I won. Obviously, it, I think I played a good game. Uh, let me just see with an engine. I think he was just losing after bishop d6. Takes, takes, knight f3. He has to be much worse here already. Yeah, plus one and a half. Bishop g7 is the best move, giving up, giving up the pawn. This I didn't think much of. Here, here. Yeah, it's still plus one and a half. So knight f3, uh, bishop d6 was played, which is just weird. Yeah, bishop h6 is the best move. Knight g4 the best move, bishop g5 the best move, f6 the best move. I played bishop d2. Yeah, the best move, great. h5, the losing move, yeah, plus 4. h3, knight h6. Knight h4, knight f7, we played, I, I mean, we played good moves. He played good moves after his initial blunder. And my position is, of course, comp completely winning. Knight takes g6, rook h7. Castle slung the best move, knight d7 the best move, and yeah, bishop e3, plus 5. I played f4, which is plus 4, plus 5, almost, so it's okay. b5, bishop e6, okay, knight f8 the best defense, yeah, bishop f5 was the best, but I took, takes, 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 and now c4, queen f3 is better, but I played queen f2, it's the same. He played h4 here, bishop e3, and now I think the rook sacrifices just work. The exchange sacrifices, let's just check. Yeah, it works. Rook d6 is the best move. Queen e6 is the only move, of course. And now I think the rook sacrifices don't work. Takes, 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 queen takes. This is a variation I was calculating, yeah. says plus plus one so plus point eight so yeah i have compensation but it's not really that good so after bishop e3 queen e6 bishop c5 plus two okay king g8 f5 queen e7 and now i think it's it's yeah after queen c5 two pawns up Queen d7, yeah, I shouldn't exchange, it's plus 5, but I think, I thought I was going to win easily. Now let's see, ah, b4, how can b4 be a good move? What about knight c4? The knight has the c4 square and the a3 square if I play b4. Why would I play b4? Rook hg1, king f7, b3, b4, knight a4, rook c8. Let's just check this complicated stuff here. Plus one. My god. I lost a lot of my advantage. Knight c6, knight c5 best. I thought this wouldn't work for some reason. Oh yeah, it does work. But I lose a pawn. Yeah, but it's it's a winning king and pawn endgame. It's just winning. So after rook e, e to d1, rook c6, I played rook c5. Which is also plus one and a half, so not bad. Rook d c seven, rook takes, rook takes. I don't defend my pawn. Why? What? Why wouldn't I defend my pawn? How would I defend f five now? No, this is just bad. I would never play this. So I defended with rook e one. I'm not sure how this can be bad. It's plus one, plus two, yeah. Knight b5, rook e2, a6, king d1, king f7, rook e3. Now, the only thing I'm worried about is his move a4. So, yeah, let's see. c4 doesn't lose. Yeah, okay, because I'm faster than his. I'm queening before his. So, g4, 
Ampasan doesn't work. Uh, King g5, c4, finally. Ampasan was best, but knight d4. Knight b2, rook d6, knight d3. a5. Let's just scroll down through these moves. And in this position. Okay, after rook e1. Let's see. a4. Let's say I take here. Takes, takes. Takes. Here. Here. Yeah, so it didn't work really. I mean, it's more complicated than than the game, so a4 was definitely a better try. Rook f1. Uh, yeah, no, a4 seems to be even better after rook f1. Takes. Oh, equal. <clears throat> I'm two pawns up and it's equal. So what do I do after a4? Rook here. Takes. Takes. Knight takes. Okay, I attack the knight first. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. But it's still equal. <laughs> wow. It was a very tricky position. I'm Rook f2, rook c8, king d2, rook c7. Yeah, now after king to e3, this is an easy win. Yeah, okay, now we are back to the normal numbers. So I'm very happy I won against a stronger opponent. We won as a team as well. Uh, Michaela, our board one, uh, drew a Fide Master on board one with the black pieces. I won on board two. And we were four and a half versus one and a half at the end of the round. So a great win against the higher rated team. Very happy, what can I say? And by the way, uh, thank you very much for the support. I'm actually going to uh, play a tournament in 10 days. Uh, because of the support you've been giving me, I, I got enough to play to pay for a hostel and the trip and the entry fee for a seven round tournament in Slovakia. So thank you very much and uh, I, I really appreciate it. I mean, you basically allowed me to play a tournament, so I'm very happy. So in 10 days, I'm going to be in Slovakia playing a tournament. Uh, next Sunday, I have another league game. So I have a game next Sunday and then seven rounds in Slovakia. So eight games uh, in the next two weeks. I'm very happy and I hope they are similar to this one. Uh, let me know what you think about the game. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Uh, thanks very much for the support and stay tuned for more chess. See you later. Bye, bye, bye.